wasn't holding you up So there's nothing I can do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm
Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to church. My name is Caitlin. I am Pastor Keith and Pam's granddaughter. Today for announcements. <laughs> She's just like her Aunt Ashley and she wrote out a script for us. So. <laughs> okay. Well, it's great to have you, Caitlin. Yeah, this is our oldest grand this is our only granddaughter, our oldest grandchild. Um, she's 11 years old, and she's been spending the week with us. You want to tell them what, some of the things we've been doing? Sure. We... <laughs> Sounds excited. You're the one that wrote that, not me. Go ahead. We went to Young's and got ice cream. We played mini golf and I won. No, no, okay, no. No, no, it's a, Who won? You. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Keep it truthful, okay? We went to a tractor show. We went thrift store shopping. We got pizza for dinner on Friday, and I have been trying to teach Grandma how to sing. Grandma? <clears throat> uh, ha, ha, ha. We're still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to help me with announcements? Sure. All right. Um, welcome to church. And you can... If watching online, please comment so we know you're joining us. Okay. Things that are happening this week. On Tuesday is the All Church Lunch Fellowship at 12.30, and everyone's gonna be meeting at? Frisch's. Yes. Uh, do you like Frisch's? Yeah. Um, he tried to, my husband tried to, Grandpa, he was trying to take you to White Castle, but they were too slow, so we decided not to go, <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, Frisch's on Bechtel, they're gonna meet there at 12.30 on Tuesday, and everyone's invited. Um, if you want to carpool, you can meet here at 12 noon, and you can go with the people that show up here. On Wednesday is Ladies Bible Study at 9.30 in the morning. Also, Hot Dog Wednesday at 6 o'clock at the Shelter House, and you can... Bring a dish to share. Right. District Teen Camp. The teens are leaving on Thursday, and there's going to be four teens, and Jeff and Carol will be going, so pray for them. And then Ladies Day Out, a special um, day just for the ladies at the Fellowship Hall this coming Saturday from 10 to 2 p.m., and from what I understand, they don't need to bring anything, correct? All right, everything will be provided, so you want to make sure you come for that. And um, summer camps, summer um, children's camps are coming up on our district real soon, so talk to Pastor Missy about that. Have you been to camp? Mm -hmm. Did you have fun? Yes. Would you recommend going to summer camp? Yeah. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, we have a new baby, brand new grandparents. Tell us about the baby. Violet Noreen Kleiss was born on Thursday. She weighed eight pounds and four ounces and is 20 inches long. Yes, and proud grandparents right over, what, there's Patrick right there, there's Karen. Yes. And then great-grandparents Talmadge and Donna Wilson so we we recommend grandparenting to you it's a pretty good thing so but congratulations I know they have pictures so I've been seeing some pictures you'll want to make sure you see those it is great to have you in church today well good morning everyone we didn't have a piano player today so that became me this morning um, good to be with you all today if you would, you're not obligated to do this, but we're trying some things this summer. We're calling this Hymn Sing Sunday again. So if you want to grab a hymnal in front of you, page 612 is what we're going to be singing from this morning. A really timely song. Matter of fact, I've been working as a chaplain in a hospital this summer, and I had just planned this song for this week, and right after I planned it, I walked into the office, and I believe it was one of my fellow chaplains that said, you know, we don't know who holds tomorrow, but well, we know he holds our hand. And I said, I just planned that song for my congregation. So we're going to sing it today, all right? Will you stand with me this morning? It's on 612 in the hymnal. I don't know about tomorrow. So for those of you that know this song, sing it out for the ones who don't, all right? I know who holds tomorrow.
you can remain standing if you'd like for prayer time. Um, exciting day today. We have new members coming in later this service. We have at least one baby being born. I don't know if there's any other ones in the family yet. Not yet. Okay, I know there's some coming on that side of the family as well. Um, I had to, my kids are probably going to get on me here from the youth group because I have my phone. It was one of those mornings where my printer decided to do an update. However, Eleni Kleiss, she's getting ready to head or is headed off to uh, overseas on a, on a mission for a while. We need to keep her and her parents and her unit in our prayers. Corey and Tracy Kleiss, exciting news with the, the birth of the little one. Very exciting. Dan, our brother Dan Hiles came through surgery just fine. No problems there. Uh, our sister Donna Anderson, um, she had a fall at home, and she really would like some prayers and cards. I know we have some card centers in the church here, and we definitely have some folks who are praying. Um, Sharma Harlan's sister, Fran, has had an uh, accident down in, her, uh, in Florida where she lives. We need to keep her in our prayers. Hunter and Morgan Hausman waiting the, the birth of a little one coming soon. Uh, our brother, Jeff Berg, um, has some chemo treatments coming up this week. We need to keep him in our prayers. Family of Jim Frump, 70, he was 79, he passed away. This is the brother of Eleanor Peabody. He just passed away um, yesterday. And our new members coming in, that's exciting. Uh, the Pastor Keith's going to be taking care of that here in a little bit. And our sister Roseanne Holton um, has a procedure coming up on Tuesday, uh, a medical procedure. We need to keep her in our prayers. As we go to prayer time, I do invite you to come forward if you would like to the altars. Uh, we talked about this this morning in Sunday school. It's a great place to uh, ask for forgiveness, repent, talk to the Lord, talk to Jesus, talk to God. It's a great place to give it up. Uh, we had a wonderful time yesterday at the men's Bible study and uh, get with Greg or I and we'll tell you when the next one's coming up. Uh, so we just, uh, we just, we had some good conversation there. And it's great for a group of guys just to sit around, talk about God and their relationship with Jesus. So as we go to prayer, the altars are open. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you. Uh, we just love you. We give you all the honor and the glory. We thank you for creating us. Thank you for putting us where we are right now today, this wonderful place of worship, as Christians, so we can share the good news about your son, Jesus Christ. We just thank you for that. The beautiful weather outside, we're gathered here as one family of body of Christ. We just thank you for our, for our visitors and our friends and our family. Oh, it's exciting news uh, with the babies being born and uh, the new grandparents and great grandparents and aunts and uncles. It's always exciting times. Father, we just thank you for the blessings of life that you've given to those folks and give to us. We pray for those who are sick right now, those who uh, are um, struggling at home in the hospital, um, wherever they're at right now, Father, just be with the doctors and medical staff and the families. Just be with them. Lift them up. Continue to give them courage to stay the course and stay in that righteous relationship with you. Father, we just ask for that and just lift up prayers, especially for those folks helping their family members. Be with those families who have just recently lost a loved one. We know sometimes, uh, for whatever reason, and we don't know why, life is cut short. And Father, we just pray that everyone here knows who you are, and has a relationship with you. And Father, be with us. We have camp coming up later this week uh, for safe travels and a great time to disciple these young teens. We're so thankful for the teens in this church. We're thankful for all the Sunday school teachers and just everything here that we have to bring up and get these folks to live a life of holiness and tell them about Jesus, your son. Father, we just ask that you watch over us and protect us as we go about this week coming up. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, whom you did send on the cross to die for each and every one of us. And Father, we just say thank you. All the honor and glory goes to you. And Father, we just say thank you. And let's have a great week and be with the pastor in his sermon today. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right, let's continue our worship this morning. We're going to ask the ushers to come at this time. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. We give you praise today, Lord, that we have the privilege of giving back to you a very small portion of all the wonderful blessings you give us. May your kingdom advance because of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. As the uh, kids come forward, which they can do that right now if they want to, come on down. Um, we do have a little bit time left for camp. So if your kid has been trying to decide if they want to go, just let me know. I think we can squeeze them in. They can still go. It's at the end of this month, and um, it's going to be a great time, and we're excited about it. So if your kid is still interested, let me know, and we will make sure that you get the information that you need. Okay, let's pray together. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for um, just being able to gather together. And I know that there were many of us um, on vacation this past week. Thank you for traveling mercies, for times um, that we can be away with our family. And um, we just thank you for um, those times that you give to us. Uh, but we are also very grateful for this morning and this service and gathering together as a church family. Thank you for these children. Thank you for what they mean to us. And I just pray that our time together would be uh, continue to be blessed by you. We ask all this in your name. Amen. Wonderful children right here. At this time, we're going to be receiving uh, new members, so I would like uh, Brad and Jen and David Jordan to come on down. Come on down. You have a choice. Would you like Caitlin to interview you? Or do you want me to? Yeah, they're going to choose Caitlin, I know. Okay, you don't have the choice. Yeah, she is cute. She's a lot of fun. Okay, we'll start with David. Now, these are people that you know, but we're going to try to find out if there's things that we don't know that we'll find out about them. Your name's, your name? David Jordan. What's your middle name? Leon. Leon, okay. We, see, we didn't know of Leon. Okay. All right. Tell us about Hi, Leon. your personal relationship with the Lord. Guys, I, have we got a couple hours? No, just one minute. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's the greatest thing I know. Okay. Very good. When did you come to know the Lord more personally? Oh, gosh, probably about 20 years ago. Okay, very good. And um, you, you obviously, well, I'm not going to say you obviously are retired, but you are retired, right? Well, that's what my wife said, okay. yeah. <laughs> right. And what did you do before you became retired? I drove truck. Okay. And um, tell us about your family, because we know you with Dave and, Dave and Nancy, but tell us you have some daughters, and tell us about your family, extended okay, family. Yeah, I have a daughter named Lisa. I have a son named Mike. Okay. Uh, Lisa lives in Florida, and my son lives in Dayton. Okay. And we've been praying for Lisa because she's going through um, lung cancer. Right. And so we need to continue to pray for her. What's, what's an update for us on her? Uh, well, she uh, just did a chemo through a port the other day. She seems to be doing okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go down and see her the 23rd. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So let's continue to pray for her. Okay, hobbies. When you're not, when you're just having fun, what, what are some things that you like to do? Well, I don't do it anymore, only in my mind, but I used to race go-karts and build engines for really? them. Yeah, yeah. Big go-karts? I mean, like, the, or the, did, you ride, did you ride on them? Well, yeah, oh, yeah. We raced. Oh, you raced? Yeah, raced, yeah. Were you a good racer? Well, I had a lot of trophies. Okay, well, good. Okay, three words that would describe David, Leon... Leon Jordan. Friendly. Friendly. That's Hopeful. one. Hopeful. Hopeful. Okay. And, Hopeful. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're going to have Nancy stand so we know who goes with you. So it's Can great. I say something else now? Yes, you can. Let's have Nancy stand. Yeah, there's Nancy. Okay. Yes, you can. See. The mic's all yours. You seem a little nervous. Are you okay? <laughs> I am always nervous up here. I know I don't, I don't always look like it, but when you're right here next to me, you can see that I'm kind of like shaking. It's just you and me talking here. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah all right. Well, I, I'd like to tell you, I had several experiences this morning since I've been here. Okay. I had a lot of people ask me if I was going to preach today. I don't know what made them say that. It's the way you're dressed. Oh, is that, okay. But anyway, I, I told them, yes. Yeah. And about half of them said they were gonna leave early, so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. It's great to have you as an official member of the First Church of the Nazarene. You've all, I mean, you're still a part of the church, even if you're not a member, but it's great to make that kind of official. So. Well, yeah, because I'll tell you what, uh, uh, all the friends I have in the world are right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel that way about you, too. Thank you. So, great. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Dave. Okay, here's Brad and Jen Whip, and we'll, we'll go with you. And you'll see that I am more nervous. It doesn't look like it, but okay. Let's get old David, he told my secret. Okay, um, this is Jen Whip, and Jen, tell us about your personal relationship with the Lord. Uh, grew up learning about the Bible, but we didn't really go to church. Mm -hmm. um, and then we moved to our current house, and the Judys invited us here, and we told them we're not really church people. So <laughs> we didn't want to go, and then we finally came here, and this is my home now. Yeah. And it's provided us you know, our family is stronger. I have best friends in this church and just, I, I love it here. Yeah. yeah. Well, we love having you guys and your whole family here. And I remember when you first came, I could tell you didn't, this really wasn't the place you wanted to be, but um, it's amazing the, the, the work the Lord has done in, your, in both your lives and your family. So, all right. When you're not in church, what do you do with your spare time besides your family? Oh, well. That is kind of what I do in my spare time yeah. is I'm kind of like a taxi for kids and sports, right. but okay. I, when I do have spare time, I do like, I like to read, okay. so. But when you, do you have a job outside the home? I do, I'm an English teacher. English teacher, okay. Yeah. So you need to watch your- Oh, uh, I'm in uh, yeah. trouble. I'm in trouble with <laughs> yeah. her all the time. Um, she's an English teacher at Northeastern High School. It used to be Kenton Ridge, but you got it new job and i recently saw on facebook you got some big award tell us about that yeah it's the larry k zirkel excellence in education award Very and good. chosen wow. by the valedictorians wow. Wow, that's, that's really cool. cool that's yeah. really cool let's give her a hand okay you already told us you like to read you also told me fishing you like to fish that's that's new, <laughs> that's new. okay and then a, an uber driver for her children so yeah that's that's something that goes along with parenting three words to describe you okay all right of course you did you're a teacher i had to ask my kids because it's hard to describe yourself and a couple of the words that they said were protective loving and guiding it's really good. It's wonderful. Okay, let's have, speaking of your family, if you are related to this couple, do you well, want to... Some that aren't related, but they're mine too. Okay, okay, but stand up if you claim her. Okay, yes. All of those. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> thanks for letting them be a part of our church. So, okay. All right, Brad. Thanks, Jen. Brad, tell us about your personal relationship with the Lord. I was not raised in a church, but I was taught the... You know, the fundamentals of the Bible. I uh, spent uh, about 40 years looking for a church where I would feel comfortable and would belong. And I, as Jen said, I'd kind of given up. And then we moved in next to the Judys, and Alan came over and invited us, and the rest is history. Very good. Yeah. Very good. So I remember a day it was very cold, and you you made a an important decision. Tell us about what happened. Well, I had been thinking about it for a while, um, and I chose to get baptized, but I am not one who likes to be in front of people. Thanks for this, by the way. Um, Neither do I. Yes. Um, so I asked Pastor if we could do it in a different way, and I know you guys all know how amazing our pastor is, but I don't know if you know that on a moment's notice, he agreed to take me to Mad River in the middle of February about five years ago and walked out into the river with me. Um, I know you're not supposed to do this, but this is, that is where my father's ashes um, were spread, and it was a meaningful place to me. So pastor walked out with me in the middle of February into Mad River and baptized me then and there. It was an amazing moment in my life. So. It was an amazing, and you did you have to break the ice? 
Um, yes, yeah. there, there were places, uh, yeah. it was icy next to the shore and we had mm -hmm. to break the ice to actually be able to walk in and he had no second guessing, nothing. The, the river was very mad that day too. <laughs> But, but how cool, how cool is that to decide, you know, the Lord wanted you to, to do that and you did that step no matter whether it was uh, cold or warm, you did that. I don't deserve that. That was the Lord acting through me. Mm -hmm. what, who deserves it is the man who was willing to go and dunk me in, <laughs> if you will. I mean, not, not a second thought, just went right in with us. So. But again, we have watched the Lord change both of your lives, and it, is, it has been amazing and, and changed your family. So it's, it's great to have you a part of us. Um, what do you do when you're not, um, when it's the school year? What do you do? I am a middle school teacher. I'm an intervention specialist, which for most of us when we were in school would have been called special education. Uh, I work with students who need some as extra assistance. Okay. Very good. And um, so hobbies, what do you do in your spare time? Well, Jennifer and I do share a love of reading and uh, I've recently gotten her into fishing. Um, and then we have, you know, well, Pew 7 is our family, so um, we, we have lots of things going on with them. Yeah, very good. Okay, three words to describe. Okay, notes. Okay, three words to describe yourself. She and I both did the same thing. We asked our kids and we chose one from each of them. Um, so I was given kindly intelligent. Yes, which very flattering. Then I was given sarcastic. Um, and then gracious. A gracious, an in intellect that's sarcastic and gracious. That's, that's, that's good, that's good. And we had your family stand, so we're not gonna have them stand again. So, but it's great to have you guys part of the members. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to have you turn and look this way. Dave, don't go away. <laughs> I tell you. Now, if I had said we were going to White Castle, you'd have stayed right here, so. <laughs> yeah, you can stand closer to these folks. They're not gonna bite, all right? Yeah, reading from the church manual, actually the manual as written by uh, one of our favorite general superintendents, Jesse, Middendorf, and this is what it says about the reception of church members. Dearly beloved, the privileges and blessings that we have in association together in the church of Jesus Christ are very sacred and precious. There is in it such hallowed fellowship as cannot otherwise be known. There is such helpfulness with brotherly watch care and counsel as can be found only in the church. There is the godly care of pastors with the teachings of the word and the helpful inspiration of social worship and there is cooperation and service accomplishing that which cannot otherwise be done. The doctrines upon which the church rests as essential to Christian experience are brief. We believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We especially emphasize the deity of Jesus Christ and the personality of the Holy Spirit. We believe that human beings are born in sin, that they need the work of forgiveness through Christ and the new birth by the Holy Spirit, that subsequent to this, there is the deeper work of heart cleansing or entire sanctification through the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and that to each of these works, the grace of the Holy Spirit gives witness. We believe that our Lord will return, the dead shall be raised, and that all shall come to its final judgment with its rewards and punishments. Do you hardly believe these truths? If so, answer, I do. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and do you realize he saves you now? If so, answer, I do. Desiring to unite in the Church of the Nazarene, do you covenant to give yourself to the fellowship and work of God in connection with it as set forth in the general and special rules of the Church of the Nazarene? Will you endeavor in every way to glorify God by a humble walk, godly conversation, holy service, by devotedly giving of your means, by faithful attendance upon the means of grace, and abstaining from all evil? Will you seek earnestly to perfect holiness of heart and life in the fear of the Lord? If, and if so, answer, I will. I welcome you into this church officially. It's not a political thing. We do vote once in a while, but that's very seldom. It's about going to the next level and saying, I'm committed to this body. I welcome you to this church. It's sacred fellowship, responsibilities, and privileges. Make the great head of the church bless and keep you and enable you to be faithful in all good works 
that your life and witness may be effective in leading others to Christ. It is a pleasure for me and behalf of this church to welcome you, as Pam said, officially, even though it's been a few years for all of us, uh, we trust that we will be a source of encouragement and strength to you, and you in turn will be a source and blessing to us. Well, I can turn on my microphone, so thanks for going. And we have here some membership certificates. Jen, it is an absolute blessing. God bless you. Brad, my teeth are still chattering, brother. <laughs> Dave. God bless you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Just look around and see this group of people. You already said it. This is your family, at least part of it. And uh, we just want you to know we love you uh, unconditionally. Thank you so much for allowing us to share this moment with you. God bless you. I don't think Lily needs the stool. Okay. Good morning. <laughs> I was really hoping I wouldn't have to do an introduction. <laughs> But hi, I'm Lily. I've been at this church since I was like eight. I'm going to turn 17 this year in September. And I was approached by Pam like last month. She ambushed me, if I must say. <laughs> and because she, she saw a musical that I did. And she's like, you can sing. So why don't you sing in church? And I'm like, I don't know. Leave me alone. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing And I'm glad that she, someone is t teaching her how to sing. But for now, <laughs> she's living vicariously through me. <laughs> when I am wasted, you are the water. When I am a debtor, Technical difficulties. <laughs> Wrong version. <laughs> we love technical difficulties, it's great. I hate to do this to you, but that is the wrong song. <laughs> it's fine, guys. It's fine. One of these days I'll learn how to run this stuff. <laughs> there we go. Success. <laughs> i
Oh, thank you, Lily. It is so gratifying to watch our young people stepping up. Thank you. Well, we're talking about the church today. It just seemed like a good opportunity while we're dealing with membership uh, and so forth to uh, share with you what happened in um, Doug and Mary Ritchie's Sunday school class a couple months ago where the kids had to fill out a report called the New Church Committee Report. And there were some questions they had to answer, so you might want to listen up to see what kind of church they think we ought to have, all right? Here we go. The name you would like your church to be, the NCM Church. Guess whose kid that was? He's not even, he might hear it somewhere, but make sure he knows that uh, Gabe did that. Uh, what should your church do? Well, it should be a class for children and vacation Bible school. Uh, what schedule should your church have? Well, it should be 9 o'clock dance and 10 o'clock dance hour. <laughs> what do you think the goal of the church should be? A thousand members and four pastors. It doesn't say new pastors, so I guess we're okay. What name would your church, should your church have? The Great Church. What activities, VBS, we make breakfast for everyone on Sunday school? The time should be 8.30 to 11.50. Uh, we should do these kinds of things as a goal for people to have fun and learn about Jesus because Jesus is amazing and we need to learn about it. What name should your church have? The Church of King of Kings and Souls of Souls. Uh, what should you do? Sunday schools, uh, eat together. There's a lot of eating going on here. The goal of the church should be get as many as people as you can. What name should your church have? Holy God Church. Uh, what should be the activities? What we have now and new games. How long should we go? From 10 o'clock to 1.30. All right. We will no longer beat those other churches to the restaurants if we do that. What should be the goal of the church? A thousand members. Okay, we've got a little ways to go. What name should your church have? The Lord Church. What should they do? Games. Now, this one's interesting. What is the goal of your church? I think I've got my zeros and commas right. One trillion, one trillion dollars is what the goal should be. What should the name of your church be? Praise God Church, Activities, Children's Church, VBS, Games, Meals Together. There's that food again. And then teach kids about Jesus and have them believe in Jesus. How about this? Trust in, church, trust in God church, games about God, Sunday school, and then very specifically end at 1.30. Okay? 1.30, here we are again. Boy, they're willing to stay a long time, aren't they? How about that? I wonder if they really would. Now this one you might find interesting. How about the name of this church? Cole's Church of God. Any idea whose kid that is? <laughs> the activity should be games. Church should last for five hours. I don't know, maybe they need five hours. You decide on that, okay? And then what should be the goal of the church? Get money. Yeah, there you go. Get money. All right. Well, okay, they're learning a lot in Sunday school. I'm a little concerned about the Richies now after... Let's read the scriptures and see what a church acted like as they gathered. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. A few days later, when Jesus entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four men. Since they could not get to him or to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why, did this, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, 
I tell you, get up, take your mat, go home. He got up, took his mat, walked out in full view of them. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. You might be thinking, well, that's not really a church. Well, I would beg to differ with you because gathering in the name of Jesus is church. In fact, Jesus said it himself in Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. So let's look at some gathering points, some reasons for the church to gather. Gathering point number one. First of all, to acknowledge Jesus authority. When we gather together, we acknowledge Jesus' authority. We praise, we honor, we glorify. It all goes to Jesus the Christ, right? I said, right. Ironically, of all the people, the religious teachers, the religious teachers were the ones who were causing trouble. I want to set the scene for you. So these four friends have this guy on the mat that they want to get down to Jesus. They rip a hole in the roof. They drop him down right in front of Jesus. Now he's laying on a mat right there at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus looks down to him and he says, Son, can you imagine the anticipation on the crowd? They're probably wondering what's about to happen. Can you imagine what that man must have been thinking? They'd already had heard the reputation of Jesus who could heal the man's laying on the mat. I don't know about you, but I'm laying on the mat and I'm closing my eyes and I'm just saying, go, Jesus, go. Jesus looks down to him and he says, son, man, I can't wait. Son, your sins are forgiven. What? What is he talking about? In fact, in Mark chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, it's voice. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Hello. Duh. These teachers of the law were so self-absorbed, they didn't recognize their own Messiah when he came. They were so about themselves, they were threatened by his popularity. They were so arrogant, they questioned his divine authority. And Jesus knew what they were thinking. Guess what? Jesus knows what you're thinking right now. Some of you are thinking, and I hope he doesn't go too long. (laughs) How many are thinking, don't you dare, don't you? (laughs) It'll hurt my feelings, and I can't handle it. So Jesus asked this test question. Mark chapter 2, verse 9. Which is easier then, to say this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? Which is easier? Huh? Which is easier? Many people would say the easier thing would be, say your sins are forgiven, because it's just words, right? Right? In fact, most people would say, I want to see a healing. I want to see somebody who formerly could not walk to stand up in front of me and start walking around. Now, how many of us would love to see that? Come on, let's be honest. We would. Yeah. Thank you. But you see, for Jesus, he knows that sin is the human problem. He knows that for the person who has accepted him as Savior will someday be with him in heaven with a brand new body, a new body that will walk, a new body that, I don't know if I want hair then or not. I've I've gotten used to being without it. It's okay. I'm okay with it. But the sin issue has to be taken care of first. Which is easier Maybe we should say, which is harder to do? You see, for the innocent Jesus to go to the cross to provide a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world is definitely a harder thing to do, isn't it? And because he went to the cross, he has authority to forgive sin. Because he was raised from the dead, he has authority to forgive sin. In fact, he has all the authority over all things. He said it himself in Matthew 28, 18. Then he came to them and said, all authority, all authority. You know what the meaning of the word all is? All. In heaven and on earth has been given to me. So we go back to the story in verses 10 
through 12 of Matthew 2. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of all of them. Isn't it interesting how Jesus in his grace obliges the crowd anyway and goes ahead and heals the guy to prove to them that he has the authority to forgive sins. When we gather, like we are right now, one of the things that happens in this gathering is we acknowledge the authority of Jesus Christ, don't we? Isn't he the authority over all things? I want to pose two warnings to you, though. First of all, we need to be careful questioning Jesus' authority and abilities when he doesn't come through with the spectacular, the healing, the high-powered job, etc. He is still the King of kings, the Lord of lords, no matter if he answers the way you think and I think he ought to answer. Secondly, since the trouble that was given to him was from the religious leaders, the preacher types, preachers can really be a problem. I want to pose this warning to you. There are some good radio and TV preachers out there. You heard me say that, right? But not all of them are. I found this little story you might appreciate. A man visits the ministry of Amanda, the famous psychic and healer. During the show... Amanda walks up to him, puts her hand on his shoulder, and exclaims, You will walk. He says softly to her, But I'm fine. My legs already work. She gestures dramatically and exclaims once more, You will walk. The man decides to just play along. He gets up and he walks around in a circle, and the crowd goes wild. After the show... He walks out, shakes his head, and figures that this Amanda is just a fake. And then as he walks into the parking lot, he noticed his car has been stolen. <laughs> Guess what? He walked. <laughs> Be careful who you follow. Be careful who you follow on the screen, and be careful when you choose a church home. Because the truth is, if they aren't pointing you to Jesus, you need to be careful. Have you acknowledged the authority of Jesus? Have you accepted the forgiveness that he provided on the cross? You see, when connected to a church that gathers for worship, there is this corporate dynamic that happens as we praise him together, acknowledging his authority. The Bible says he inhabits what? The praises of his people. Gathering point number two. Why does the church gather? To encourage faith. It says in Mark chapter 2, verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith... Mutual encouragement of faith happens when we gather together. 1 Thessalonians 5.11, Therefore, encourage one another, build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. You are doing. You are. You are encouraging one another. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25 says this, And let us consider how we may spur one another. You know what spurs are? Spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, not giving up meeting together. Oh, that doesn't, it says it only once, but I'm saying it more than once. As some of you are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I want to say this as kindly, but as clearly as I can. We didn't go online so healthy people could sit in their jammies and watch on the screen. Now, of course, we did provide that service for those who can't make to our gatherings. Being together has a dynamic that can't be replaced, folks. We all have down times. I understand that. Grief, discouraged, depressed. There are times on Sunday morning I don't want to come to church. But that's very minimal. You see, the group can be a help. 
Sometimes we have to faith it for one another. You ever had to have somebody faith it for you? Sometimes we have to. Gather around in this place, we can bring them to Jesus in prayer. We hear testimonies in the hallways, in the sanctuary, how God is working. It's nice to be reminded that God is still alive and well and working, isn't it? Have you ever had a dry time in your faith and it's good to hear somebody else tell you a testimony and you say, okay, God is still at it. It stirs our faith. Membership is a testimony. Those things we heard this morning stirs my faith. I don't know about you, but it stirs mine. Can you imagine the faith that was stirred in those four friends who brought the man to Jesus? It encourages the faith of the whole group. When we gather together, it encourages faith. Finally, the gathering point number three is when we gather together, we can bring friends to Jesus. <laughs> How many of you are in church today as a result of an invitation? I want to see the hands. Come on. Keep them up. How many of you are in church today as a result of an invitation? Yeah, quite a few. There are four guys in this story who are desperate to bring a physically challenged friend to Jesus. How desperate were they? So much so they ripped a hole in that roof. Probably not their own. A bunch of people who were gathered in that house. Probably some were skeptical. Some of those people were probably just there because they were curious. Maybe there were some there just to please a friend. You ever gone to church because somebody keeps badgering you? Why don't you come to church? Why don't you come to church? Why don't you come to church? You say, okay, I'll go to church. But it doesn't matter how they get there because when Jesus is in the center of it, things can happen in their lives. Let's face it, this paralyzed man was helpless. His friends did what, he, what they could do humanly to help him. But at that point, Jesus had to take over with divine help. You don't have to fix everything. You just need to bring them to Jesus. I don't have to fix everything. I just need to point them to Jesus. The church gathering is a good place to bring a friend. People are here in this place in all stages of spiritual life. But Jesus is in the middle of all of it, and he can make a difference in our lives. The church as a group can bring the resources that God has provided together much more than one individual can at a time. So the question is, do you have friends, relatives, dare I say enemies, that could use Jesus' help? Bring them to Jesus in prayer, first of all, and when the opportunity allows itself, then care enough to go to the extreme to actually ask them to church. Guess what? They just might say yes. And if you don't want to invite them to this church, invite them to another church that preaches the Bible. That's a good start. Well, I'm to the conclusion. Everybody say, yeah, I know. The rest of you wanted to say it, but you didn't have the guts. I suppose that the people that owned that house had to call a roofer to make repairs. What do you think? And so did this one. Can we, can we show that? Do you have that? <laughs> now, as I understand the story, if you read the story around the, the uh, image here, you find out that apparently this raccoon had entered that house from another way at some time and had herself some babies... And uh, somehow they found the way that she originally got in and they plugged that hole. But she was so desperate, so desperate to get to her baby, she literally ripped a hole in the roof. But it was only big enough for her head. Well, the rest of the story is they were able to help her and blah, blah, blah and all that stuff. But this is the point. Jesus used nature and wildlife to make a point. Can you hear him? If a creature is that desperate to get help for someone else, much like those four friends were desperate enough to rip a hole in a roof to get their friend to Jesus, shouldn't we try to introduce people to Jesus who is the one who could make a difference in their lives?
Shouldn't we? I want to tell you something. One of the primary purposes why we gather is to point people to Jesus. Stand with me. I imagine this morning during this message the Holy Spirit might have given you the name or names of somebody. Maybe they live next door. Maybe you work with them. I don't know. Maybe somebody who you just, first of all, just need to mention to the Lord in prayer. Take them to the Lord in prayer. But there might be an opportunity if they don't have a church family like this. This is pretty, this is pretty good. This is nice to have. You heard that earlier. They could benefit from something like this too. You don't have to be obnoxious about it. The Lord will give you the opportunity if you ask Him to. We gather to point people to Jesus. So let's pray about it. Lord Jesus, you know exactly who it was that came to our minds this morning. Some of us work with them. Some of us, they're right there in our family. Some of them are maybe even under the same roof with us. You know the situation, Lord, better than we do. And you know exactly the timing and all that should take place. But one thing we know for sure is it's really good when we can point somebody to you. Oh, there might be some things we can do for them. There's some of them we might be able to feed and help with food and maybe clothing or maybe even point them a way to find some housing, whatever it is. But Lord, there's a point where our abilities end and yours must begin. And so we pray that, Lord, as we think of those people, may we even now, even now, mention their names before you as we point them to Jesus. And it's in your great name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Well, let's end with a song of rejoicing today for salvation belongs to our God. Let's worship together.
Salvation belongs to our God. Please hear this benediction today from Romans chapter 8. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor ruler nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us today.